Hello guys, welcome to my world of fragrance. Today's video is about Rosendo Mateu, the Spanish fragrance brand which has been on everybody's lips. I feel like everyone has been hyping up number five so much that I wanted to talk about the full line because there are other options for all of you. So for anyone who is curious about this brand, please stay tuned. So Rosendo Mateu, as you may or may not know, is an industry veteran. He's been around for over 40 years creating a ton of fragrances for Puig and working with a lot of different brands. And basically his whole philosophy is that he wants to combine things that are commercial and mass appealing and at the same time also have products that are unique. So this is a very difficult thing to achieve. Um, you can easily fall on either side of the line, but that is what he's trying to create with his own line, which he released in 2017. He is a master perfumer. There are not very many master perfumers out there. So yes, this guy knows what he's doing. He knows what the people want. And so I'm gonna talk about the original collection by Rosendo Mateu. These are the bottles that look like this. He also has a black collection that he has released subsequently, but I'm gonna focus on the core collection. First we have in chronological order number one, this one says bergamot tea leaf sandalwood. And what I like about these is that it says the actual like notes that are inside the perfume. So you kind of get an idea of what the fragrance smells like. Um, but although, you know, you don't have a hundred percent idea of what it is until you've actually tried it. So this does say bergamot, but I get a lot of neroli in the beginning of this fragrance. I love neroli, especially this time of year. So this is a fragrance that I've been reaching for quite a bit. Um, I also had it in my latest what I've been wearing video, I think. And it's just a really easy citrus, sharp citrus grab for me and it dries down with that bergamot and tea leaf predominantly and yeah it's just very nice very cooling and refreshing i will say that in this line they kind of go from the freshest to the deepest heaviest fragrances so number one is the absolute freshest one and then number six is the heaviest but still rosendo mateu has this uh, special way of being able to make all of the fragrances pretty much similar in weight. None of them feel too fleeting or too heavy that you're drowning. So that's something that's really special about this line. The next one in the line is number two. This one is a more lived in citrus. So it's citrus with woods and suede. And you definitely feel that it is less sharp than number one. It's more mm, subtle and smooth in the dry down. It's a lot smoother of a citrus than number one is. So that one is also a very suave citrus fragrance. Then we have number three. This is an iris musky scent. It does say neroli um, as a top note, but I don't get much neroli in this fragrance. It definitely is a nice floral musk, a good go-to floral musk, I would say, um, that isn't, you know, too offensive either. So that one's nice. Number four. Now we're going more in the territory of the heavier scents, but like I said earlier, none of these are like too heavy where you're drowning. All of them seem to have the, you know, general public in mind. These are the types of fragrances that I don't imagine anyone being offended by, anyone disliking. They're just that kind of line and still you do feel a really nice quality um, compared to the usual high street. So number four is the Oud fragrance in this line. It is, you know, more focused on that woody depth more than anything else, but it definitely is a nice Western take on the Oud, so it's not, you know, overpowering or anything. It doesn't go sweet either, so it really is focused on that dry wood and it, you know, smells really nice and classy too. Then we have number five, and this is the very much hyped fragrance. And I do think that it is with good reason because this is a nice, uh, sweet, floral, amber fragrance that is quite a popular genre. But I still feel that Rosendo Mateo did create something of his own with this one. If you're a person who likes fragrances like uh, Le Mal, or if you like Alexandria II by Serajov, Prada Amber, and those types of sweet ambery scents, then I definitely think that you would love number five. So this one, I think I've used more out of this one out of all of them, but also I do give uh, samples away to my friends. So that's another reason. And people are asking about this one. Lastly, we have number six. This one is the most indulgent one. It is the sweetest one. It is the sort of heaviest one. It's also the darkest in color, but still 
you know, it's not crossing any boundaries. It's not making anyone uncomfortable. It's a musky, sensual sandalwood with some jasmine as well. It's slightly heady, but you know, it just it doesn't go overboard. So I think that this is a nice, versatile, sweet, sensual sandalwood fragrance that a lot of people would enjoy as well. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my overview of Rosendo Mateo. I tried to kind of breeze through them so that I'm not just like wax and poetic and going on and on and on about each and every scent. So let me know how you feel about this format. Would you like me to focus more on each scent or would you like me to do these quick format videos where basically I get straight to the point. As always, please leave me a thumbs up if you enjoy this content. It helps my content rise so that more people see it. And I think that, yeah, I'm just trying to spread the message of truly loving fragrance and finding fragrance for yourself. And I will see you in my next review. Thanks for watching.